Wait, if you're thinking about buying a new soundbar for your own theater or living room setup, then you definitely need to watch this video before you click that buy button because I'm gonna introduce you to the King Kong of soundbars. Coming right up. Yo, what up guys, it's Colin here from CH Gadgets. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I chose the Nakamichi Shockwave Ultra 9.2 soundbar over five different choices of the best of the best soundbars on the market in 2019 that offers Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and DTSX. Full disclosure, before we get started, I wanna establish one thing. And that is, in this video, I'm gonna give you as much useful information as you may need so that you can make an informed purchase decision, which means that this is gonna be a full comprehensive review. However, at the end of this video, you're gonna have no doubt in your mind if this thing is worth your hard-earned cash or if it's just worth throwing in the trash. So here's a list with a few of the things that we're gonna cover in this video. What's in the box? Basically, what you get for the money. Design and build, which is basically self-explanatory. Ease of use and function, which means that I'm gonna tell you how easy it is to set it up out of the box. Plus, we're gonna do a walkthrough with a few of the key functions and features and see what's up. Sound quality and delivery, which is also basically self-explanatory. We also wanna know how does it compare? We wanna know how does this stack up against some of the best of the best in the market in 2019. If you decide to get the Shockwave Ultra 9.2, which I highly suggest that you should seriously consider it, this is what you should expect inside the box. One 45 inch soundbar that is also the brains behind this operation, along with two side surround speakers, as well as two rear surround speakers, and two powerful 10 inch wireless subwoofers. Now, the total power output of this system is an insane 1000 watts divided across 18 different drivers that are capable of producing about 110 decibels of sound, which means that this thing can get almost as loud as a jet engine. And trust me, this thing can get really loud. As a matter of fact, whenever we're watching movies, my auntie gets so scared sometimes, she runs straight in the room and shut the door. She said it's too powerful. But we'll get into more on that later. You also get a ridiculous amount of hardware and accessories for different mounting options. I like how this soundbar look. It has a really nice angular design that is both for aesthetics as well as for function. From what I can tell, it's made from some real high quality materials with a metal grill and it feels surprisingly sturdy and premium in the hands. On the top, above the Nakamichi logo, is where you'll find a few basic controls. There's a power button, you basically turn it on and off, you already know that. A source button for selecting your input. A demo button that puts the soundbar in a test mode that plays different frequencies on each channel so that you can know which channels are working. So when you flip it around to the back, that's where you will find all the ports. You have three HDMI in port and a HDMI arc out port to the TV that is compatible with Dolby Vision, HDCP 2.2, and 4K HDR pass-through. There's also an optical port, an aux port, coaxial, along with a USB service port that also doubles as a media playback. And last but not least, power port. The dual rear and dual surround sound speakers also feels really good. They might not feel as premium as the soundbar itself, but they also don't feel cheap. And the dual subwoofer also feels solid and really well made. Now, if you have more than one media device that supports Dolby Atmos, it's recommended that you port everything through the soundbar so it can do all the audio decoding and then pass the video through to the TV. When you first take it out of the box, the setup is really simple, especially if you follow the instruction manual. Just make sure you connect all your media device to the soundbar via the HDMI in, and then connect your soundbar to the TV via the HDMI out. And then try to figure out where you're gonna place your subwoofers, because you're gonna have to connect your side surround and your rear surround speakers to your right and your left subwoofer. So, I would suggest that you place them on either side of the main seating area, since that's where the duo can deliver the most slam, impact, and pressure. Once you have those all set up, just connect your soundbar to the power outlet along with your two subwoofers that also need their own separate power outlet since they are wireless, and just switch them on and let them pair. Now, since no two rooms have the same layout, this is the point where you would play one of your favorite movies, let's say Spider-Man, so you can get a sense of where exactly you want to place your surround sound speakers. And then adjust them accordingly and you're good to go. So this is the part where I answer the question, how does it sound? Well, it's a little more complex than that. It's not just how does it sound, it's more like how does it 
feel. The powerful subwoofer along with the surround speakers and dual subwoofer create an incredible sound stage that transforms your living room into an IMAX theater. Well, minus the big giant screen. Well, unless you have a big giant screen in your house. But the sound, the sound is definitely IMAX. And I'm not just being an hype beast. This thing works like magic. The sound bar with its six forward facing drivers and its two side firing tweeters project with an insane accuracy and clarity in its sound reproduction. And the side and rear surround speakers also adds more clarity and depth to the immersion, which kind of low key makes you lose a sense of awareness when you're watching movies. The sub Woofer also delivers some really low rumbling bass with some overwhelming slam and impact. I'm talking about the kind of bass that makes everything in the room shake. I'm serious. I mean the scary kind of shake like the walls are coming down. This is why like I mentioned earlier, whenever we start watching movies, my Hunter usually gets so scared from the rumble and the bass that she heads straight to her room and lock the door. But on the flip side, this is the exact reason why my cousins always want to come over every weekend and all the time and watch movies. However, you do have the option on the remote to adjust the gain on the bass to whatever you're comfortable with. We just crazy. We like when the walls come down. So while I was researching own theater and sound bars, I discovered that it's much better to have dual subwoofer with your setup than just one. And here's why. Whenever you go to the movies, they use multiple subwoofers to reproduce a powerful bass effect that often pulls you deeper inside the movie and the story, which is one of the reasons why you keep buying movie tickets and going back again and again, because you want that experience. And this kind of experience is almost impossible to replicate with the single subwoofer soundbars that are on the market today. Because while they sound good, they're not great. They can't recreate that cinema experience that you've gotten used to and love with a single sub. And the main reason for this is a single sub suffer from what is called localization. And this is where the bass sounds slightly detached while you're watching the movie, which means that you can easily discern which direction the bass frequency is coming from or where in the room the subwoofer is located. And this is where the problem lies because bass is supposed to be omnidirectional, which means that you're not supposed to localize it in a room. But when you have dual subwoofers, it adds another layer of depth to the sound stage. And you have decreased localization, which means it's almost impossible for you to pinpoint where exactly in the room the bass is coming from because it feels like it's coming from all around you and you're right there in the middle of the action. Plus, two subs can always play louder than one. And the bottom line is with dual subwoofers, especially when you have two massive 10 inch subwoofers like this, you get more slam impact and pressure, which is the thing that makes it so exciting when you go to the movies. And this is why the Shockwave Ultra is such a great Dolby Atmos soundbar, because the technology can use these loudspeakers along with a dual subwoofer and manipulate them in 3D space to position sounds all around you and create a realistic and compelling cinema experience in your home. All right, just check out this demo. This is Dolby Atmos the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sits the mood of a scene. Your vehicle inside the road. Whoa! What is this place? Ah! Come on, you guys, let's go! Or captures the full extent. Do you want to know my secret? Of nature's fury. If you told somebody that you're looking to buy a soundbar and you want to know the top two soundbars on the market that you should consider, the list would probably go something like this. The Samsung HWN50, the Sony ST5000. These are some of the best and they're at the top of the food chain. But this is how the Nakamichi Shockwave Ultra 9.2 stack up against these other soundbars. Okay, so let's take a really quick look at this PowerPoint chart that I have with all three soundbars lined up. So on the left side of the chart is where I have a few important categories that we're gonna use to evaluate each soundbar. And those categories are as follows. Cost, basically how much money do you spend in comparison to what you receive? 
positive feedback, which means that we look at a few authentic reviews from a few different places so that we can have a general idea of what most people think. How many channels does it offer? What's the total power output of the system? How many audio standards does it support, such as Dolby Atmos, DTSX? How many visual standards does it support, such as 4K HDR, Dolby Vision, etc.? How many subwoofers do each system offer? How many surround speakers do you get with the package? And last but not least, HDMI standards and ports. By the way, you can research all this information on each product respective site. It may take you a few hours, but if you don't have any time for that, you can always come back to this video and check out my chart. Okay, so if we look at the first category, which is the cost, as you can see, the Shockwave Ultra cost $1,299 versus the Samsung that is $1,700, the Sony ST5000 that is $1,500. So if you look real quick at some of the reviews across the web on basically Best Buy and Amazon, you can see how I stack up the Shockwave Ultra, usually get about 4.8 to 4.7 stars on each in comparison to 4.3, 4.5, 4.6 to 4.0 across uh, different websites with each different sound bars. All right, so real quick down to the channels. How many channels do they offer? Well, the Shockwave Ultra offers 9.2. 2.4 while the Samsung Sony 7.1 7.2 respectively as far as power output you can see where the Nakamichi Shockwave Ultra offers 1000 watts at 110 decibels while the Samsung which is $1700 gives you only 512 watts and the Sony ST5000 offers 800 watts now in terms of audio standard as you can see the Shockwave Ultra also supports Dolby Atmos DTSX and a few other standards but those are the major ones likewise the Samsung offers the same the Sony ST5000 offers the same now as far as visual standard as you can see the Shockwave Ultra and the Sony ST5000 and the Samsung HWN50 that offers both 4k HDR and Dolby Vision now when it comes to subwoofer as you can see the Shockwave Ultra is the only one in this category that offers two 10 inch subwoofers while most offer eight so if it's important important to you to have a lot of bass when you're watching your movie then you know you only have one option now when it comes to surround speakers as you can see the shockwave culture gives you four speakers while most give you only two and some gives you none as far as hdmi standards and ports as you can see the shockwave ultra offers three ports in along with the sony st5000 and one arc out while most other in this category only offers two now if it's important to you to have a lot of ports because you have a lot of different media streaming devices xbox playstation then you know you only have two options in this list so overall as you can see the shockwave ultra 9.2 offers great value with quality and performance in comparison to what it costs now i'm not going to tell you that it's the best of all because best is such a relative word but what i can tell you it's the best for me right now and the performance has exceeded my expectations okay so here's a few caveats i want to leave you with before i go right after you set it up out of the box the first thing you need to do is tap that demo button on the soundbar so you can know if you connect everything correctly and just like anything in life there are a few trade-offs that you're gonna have to deal with when you buy this soundbar and here's a quick list with a few of the ones that i've noticed number one there is no on-screen display on the tv whenever you're navigating the soundbar settings so the only way for you to see what you're doing is to look on the small led panel at the front of the soundbar itself which can be a little challenging if you're sitting all the way across the living room and number two the surround speakers are not completely wireless like I mentioned earlier, you have to connect them to the left and right subwoofer. The good thing is, you don't have to run any cables across your entire living room from your soundbar to your surround speakers. However, you still have to deal with a few extra set of wires coming from the back of your subwoofer to your surround speakers. And number three, just remember that these are two massive 10 inch subwoofers, which means that they have a really large footprint. So if you want that earth shaking bass, then you're gonna have two massive human sized speakers taking over your living room like Dwayne Durant Johnson and his twin brother. And number four, there is no built in Wi Fi functionality with this soundbar, so you won't be able to use your favorite 
favorite music streaming services such as Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music, Google Music, or Pandora natively. However, if you're not an audio snob, you can still stream your music via Bluetooth, which may result in a bit more audio compression versus streaming via Wi-Fi directly from the source. So there it is. You have way more information than I did before I got this system in the house. But now that you know everything there is to know, what are you going to do with this information? The choice is ultimately yours. But if you want one for yourself, check the link down in the description. And if there's something that you thought I forget to mention in this review, leave your question down in the comment section and I'll definitely answer it. If you didn't like this video, you already know what to do. But if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in my next video. Peace.